most people don't. And if you do understand how to do it, you're going to get a lot of deal flow and deals from it. So if you can communicate a story effectively, specifically through a video, people are going to be drawn to you. World-class lessons from the real estate industry's top 1%. Empowering agents to think bigger and do more to create life by design. Hi, you guys. Welcome back to another episode of Light It Up Podcast. Our goal is to empower real estate agents to think bigger and live a life by design. Today, we are joined by Brandon T. Adams. Brandon is a two-time Emmy award-winning producer, TV host, media expert, investor, and advisor. Uh, he was also recently named one of the top 10 entrepreneurs to follow in 2023 by Entrepreneur. Uh, Brandon, thank you so much for spending some time with us today, man. Hey, excited to be here. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, man. Well, this is going to be exciting because this is, uh, you know, one of the first, uh, you know, people we've had on or guests we've had on that's not real estate, real estate focused, but more in the realm not 100%, of- Not like, 100%, yeah. Yeah, but more of like <laughs> just in the realm of an entrepreneur and in that world. And with a lot of realtors trying to transition into business owners, there's no one else that we could think of that would bring so much value to our audience uh, as yourself. So we're excited to jump into this. Awesome. Cool. So we usually like to start with our lightning round yep. where we ask questions that uh, these are, are, are a little bit more, you know, life business minded. So I don't think they're too outside the box. <laughs> Let's light it up. Let's, Let's light go. it up. All right. First <laughs> and foremost, uh, Brandon, who in your life inspires you to be better? My wife, my father, and Kevin Harrington. Mm. I see you a lot on social media with Kevin Harrington. Uh, is that because he's had an influence in like the, the business ventures that you want to do in, or is it just because he's been an influence <clears throat> as like a, a family? Influence, mentor, and we also have ownership in about 25 companies together. Nice. That's awesome. All right. Second question is, how do you get in your own way of success? <laughs> how do I get in my own way of success? That's a good question. I, I don't know if I know the answer to that, uh, how I get in my own way. Maybe sometimes think too much into things, but that's good reason I go to the gym to kind of get rid of those thoughts of thinking too much and just taking action. Yeah, no, that's good. You know, one question I always ask, and John hates it every time I ask it, is if you could have dinner with one person, dead or alive, and you could spend the whole day with them, who would it be? Napoleon Hill. There you go. Now you got his attention. <laughs> and I should just preface that. It's not that I hate that question. It's that you used to ask it by saying, three who people. are three people? And and people would sit there and make their head spin for the third person. So I'm glad I could give you some all day, but yeah, <laughs> Napoleon Hill is my first one. For, who would be a second and a third if you had to pick? Gun to your head. <laughs> yeah, I, I would pick Steve Jobs. And then I would pick, uh, you know, Johnny Cash would be a cool one. Why Johnny Cash? Because he's one of the most iconic legends in country music. And he had to make a lot of sacrifices along the way. And I'm curious to see what sacrifice he made and if he was uh, happy with them or if he would have done things differently. Yeah. yeah. And the only reason why I like to ask that question is because it tells you a lot about the person that you're talking to, right? And it's like the, you know, you're saying overthinking is could be one of the ones if you had to think of something, right? And then you're thinking about thinking grow rich. And that's a big topic mm -hmm. today because when things are good, no one's actually thinking about their thought processes and what's going on because you're not thinking anything negative. But when times are hard, that's when it matters the most. It is. I mean, I'll tell you this, like I have one of my talents is taking action and implementing and just doing with that along my journey is there was definitely downsides because I would take action and I literally did whatever it took to achieve success, which almost killed me along the way. But the negative thought side too, like when you were in the low moments, I tell you like the devil inside your head, the thoughts. If, if you can learn to conquer them, you get through it, you're going to be great. But most people, they let it get to them and it takes them down. Yeah. With Napoleon Hill and Think and Grow Rich, uh, you produced a movie uh, for Think and Grow Rich to give almost a visual concept to the book itself. Yeah. So basically it, what the, the film did was it took different stories throughout the book. If you read it, like Thomas Edison, Andrew Car Carnegie, Henry Ford, like different stories in the book. And we put it in actual scenes and theatrical like uh, spots. And then what we did is we took people that were, um, had lived their life based on the principles of thinking rich. So like myself, there's Grant Cardone, Kevin Harrington, Barbara Corkin, Lewis Howes, and, and other people, Bob Proctor. 
interviewed them and basically asked them uh, based on different principles, how they achieved success, how they applied the principles. And then what we did is we tied them to different principles that related to the actual stories in the book. Mm. And so the, the, the film, I mean, it's in three languages, it's been seen by millions of people. It's, it's everywhere. And this actually, we released it originally in 2017 at theater premiere in LA live. And then it's, I mean, it's everywhere. You can, if you can see it on social media, it's, uh, I see it all the time. People are reaching out to me every week. It's cool to see it in different languages too. So it's a, been a massive success. That's awesome. If I was somebody who knew you back in 2016, before it was produced, what would I say is the biggest differences that you've uh, taken away from that production? I was just a kid. <laughs> I mean, I, I was 26 when I filmed. Uh, I'll never forget it. I was in San Diego. Myself, Joel Brown, and John Lee Dumas filmed on set the same day. And, and now I'm 33. Definitely feels like a long time ago. But since then, I mean, I was found some success in business and achieved my own success. But I had a lot more obstacles to go through. So it's very interesting because you watch that film. I was living success. But literally a few years later, I almost lost everything and was challenged and really had to live the principles again to get back to where I am today. Yeah. Can you go a little bit more in depth with, with that? So like knowing the principles, going, you know, reading the book, being an advocate for it, right? And then you go yeah. through the hard times and it's hard to actually implement those systems, right? Can yeah. you just walk us through that journey and what you had to do to, to break through? Yeah. I mean, by the way, another book for people to read is Outwitting the Devil by uh, Napoleon Hill and Sharon Lecter, uh, basically, um, help publish it. it was for 60 years was not out because Napoleon Hill's wife didn't want it out thought people are going to basically like think he's nuts. Yeah. I share that because as you become more successful, that book really shows you the things that take successful people down from reaching their full potential. But to answer your question, uh, for me, I mean, I can share a couple stories and just when we in 2018, the first big kind of downfall, then another one happened in a short period of time is we were filming a show called Success in Your City, and it was my wife and I, well, fiance at the time. We're traveling the country. We're, we're filming. We'd fly in our film crew. We'd film for four days. We would well, we'd go to the next city and do it again. And I was funding most of that project at that time, and I had other businesses I was running. Well, I went a little too deep, and during the second episode of filming in Second City, uh, I almost went bankrupt. I mean, I was negative thousands of the bank account. I was debt collectors calling me it just was very difficult. Like it was a very kind of depressing, hard time sitting in a hotel and I was down to my last credit on a credit card. I had faith and that's where, that's one of the principles in the book, faith and believing and knowing things are going to work out. And I did. And really I found when you're right before your big success, you have this sense of peace and like everything's going to be okay. You go obstacle, hell, <laughs> it's going to be all over to peace and faith. And then right after that, literally a few days later, I had a deal that went through that made me more money in that deal than my whole previous year of income. Nice. And I was back to the, the road again. And then literally like a year later, I was back in the, the gauntlet. I literally, I was almost forced to go bankrupt. And I was like, I lost everything. I lost um, vehicle, lost every, everything, everything we had. Um, I lost, I had land. And so that was again, back to the bottom. And really the toughest thing there while I lost everything, still making money, I was still growing, developing, but I was also speaking on stages. So it was mm. like a mind fuck for me because I'm this person of success and, and created this film, show, Emmys, all this. But deep down inside, like I'm on stage and thinking, dude, I got to get a deal because I'm going to lose. I need to keep making payments. I, I chose not to go bankrupt. So I paid my debt off. Yeah. So for about 12, 13 months of my life, it was so hard. Um, almost got divorced out of it. I just kept pushing. I wake up every day and knew that if I didn't make something happen, it was going to be done for me. And so that was probably the most challenging part of my life. But again, my whole theme is never give up. I had faith. I was persistent. I surrounded myself with the right people. I continuously went back to my ground of how I could add value. I made money and eventually I got momentum and, and dug my way out and really started getting growth. And now I'm, I'm sitting in a a way better place. <laughs> Which is amazing. And thank you for being vulnerable and sharing that. The yeah. biggest thing, you know, Ray Dalio talks about this is having a, a true sense of reality, right? Mm -hmm. It's like you can either, if you're realizing you're, you're, something's going wrong, right? You could deny it and be like, no, 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 it's not happening. Or you can have a true sense of reality and say, okay, this is fucked up. I have one option. I can either stop or I can 
figure out a solution to this problem. You just got to pivot. And, and it's so true. Like it, I looked at how can I use this to my advantage? And I'm grateful it happened because honestly, if that wouldn't have happened to me, it probably would have, it wouldn't have gave me the foundation and strength and knowledge to be able to do what I do today. And uh, I really think it was a catapult for my success. And the Kevin Harrington, when we were at the Disruptors event, um, he, he was talking about how he uh, relabeled, I think it was Zig Ziglar's book or... Um, yeah. And he rebranded, is that the same technique that you use? Because that's genius because you were surrounding yourself with so many different people as well as you were producing that. Yeah, it was, I mean, I love what he did with that book. I mean, Kevin, Kevin and I actually have a book we did together called Put a Shark in Your Tank. Nice. And where we... We co-authored it. We brought other people in. And and to really to that point, what I always did was I co-brand association and being around the right people. And I know it's cliche, but you are the average of five people you spend the most time with. And your network net worth is based on your network. Yeah. And so for me, I always made put myself in positions where I was surrounded by people like the Kevin Harringtons of the world and other influential people. Because for one, if you're adding value to them, making their life easier and you're in the proximity of them on a regular basis, eventually you're gonna be put in a position that's gonna make your life really good and also gonna make you a lot of money. Yeah. And so once I learned that, I just realized, okay, I gotta always put myself in that position. And then it just becomes first nature. And then before you know it, people wanna be around you because you start, you really kind of built that level to the next level. And then it's, you still wanna be around those people, but it helps attract more to you, your own personal brand. Yeah. And it's like you're building your own board of advisors like Napoleon talks about, right? It's 100%. Yeah. yeah. And, but you're getting like the top of the tier uh, ultimately by serving them in a way that benefits them, but you're also getting exposure to that. So one thing I do every year is I write down my 10 people I want to go to battle with mm. and the 10 people that are most influential in my life, but also I want to add the most value to and grow with. And each person is picked very uniquely because they add value to me in ways that I need. Um, but also I want to help them. I believe in them. And so I write down those 10 people and I'll say like, if I was going to go battle on the battleship, these are my 10 people. And if, if they're not somebody I would go to battle with, they should not be on my ship. And so Kevin's one of them. I have some other people on that list that really have helped me grown. And I make sure to make them money. I make sure to help them in return. Obviously they help me and we're like almost like a football team. We're just missing one. It's 10, <laughs> not 11. <laughs> Who are some of the people that are on your list this year? Yeah, so my wife is one of them. Uh, Kevin Harrington, Jeff Hoffman, Brennan Green has been one. He's very known in the real estate world. He's been, he actually helped me in many ways when I was almost bankrupt. Um, he helped me navigate that. James Whitaker, uh, he was also one of the guys that helped produce the, the film Think and Rich Legacy. Uh, just to, to name a few, those are people that have been very instrumental in my my success and, and sanity. <laughs> Yeah. I, you know, we always talk about power and proximity and it's, it's something that you've almost like, you know, as you're going and we're talking through this, it's something that you've, you've actually em embraced like through different kind of levels. Can you share any relationships and the, the successes that it's formed that you weren't even expecting by just contributing to those relationships and the outcomes it's gotten for you personally? Every single week. Um, I'm seeing it now. Um, uh, I'm getting booked out to speak every week because of my proximity and and people seeing who I am. Obviously, when you have very influential people around you, there's credibility to it. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, if this person says this, or or they're around that this person, we trust that. Um, so that's one thing, just getting speaking gigs, but also like I I've built out a pretty good portfolio of uh, investments I have in different companies in all ranges from tech to telemedicine to health to wellness to blockchain to crypto to you name it. And so that came because of my association with the right people. And also, again, my ability to execute and get things done. So like when I have a powerful team around me, board advisors, but there's always value to somebody that makes sure things get done. So you can have a name a part of it, but there's somebody there that has to like make sure the execution happens. And, and so that's something I've always done. I've executed on it. So opportunities come to me. And I don't know if there's any random ones. I mean, there's some cool things that happen. Like you get invited to different things. Three months ago, we were on a jet. We got flown to uh, Mexico <laughs> and, nice. and literally to speak at an event. So that's pretty cool. It went to the wrong city. Fun story. <laughs> the jet took us to the wrong city in Mexico. And we didn't find out until 15 minutes after getting off the jet. And then we found out. And then we're like, no, you got to take us to here. <laughs> and we got back on the jet and made it in time for our dinner. But like stuff like that. And, and the people I meet, like I'm meeting uh, billionaires. I'm meeting very influential people. 
but I, I don't look at them any differently than myself. Yeah. And I don't think anybody should. They're just humans that made the right choices and something to achieve their own success. Yeah. Um, but it's really cool because some of these people were my idols growing up. And now I see myself as one of them. And it's just, it's cool. I, I, I'm very grateful. Everything I went through has given me this. And I, I don't take it for granted. I always look as an underdog because I look, hey, I always got to be on top of my game. I think the number one mistake that happens to people, and that's why Outwitting the Devil is a great book, is they let it get to their head. They let the ego get to their head, the success or the money or whatever it is. And then they get lazy or they feel like they're invincible and they don't, they, the, the discipline goes away. And so I'm constantly challenging myself and pushing myself out my, outside my comfort zone. Yeah. So I never became stagnant and I don't get lazy. Yeah, that's incredible. I think that's a, a point that comes up with a lot of different guests that we've had on is that, you know, once you start seeing some progress, you have to, you have to create that consistency. Consistency is the key. You have to create that accountability. And, and sometimes I even jokingly compare it to just setting up this podcast, right? We could film this. We, we always say that we film this in Kiro's mother's basement, but, uh, this is my mother's basement, that's <laughs> start, but no, but by, by holding ourselves accountable, signing up for the studio, right? Then we had the pressure of saying, hey, we've already paid for the studio. Now we got to get these guests. And here we are now, whatever it is, a year later, 50 episodes. Yeah. And amazing people. But it, but if we well, had to record this in our office and just with two microphones and say, hey, you know, let's let's try to do it when we can, it wouldn't happen. But getting it on the calendar and taking action. What what you just said there is like what I've done is I've put myself in positions where the only option is to do it. Yeah. And, and when you commit to that, sometimes it's difficult. It's good to have an accountability person with you. But like when I would commit to things, when I committed, I didn't know how I was going to do it or sometimes know how I was going to afford to do it. But I knew if I just said I would do it and told people, eventually it would fall into place. Now, it didn't yeah. always like go an easy path, of course, uh, but it worked out. And you declared it. That's the first step, right? I declared it. Yeah. You burn the ships. You burn the ships. Commit and figure it out later. Yeah. The, yeah. the thing that's interesting, if you look at Napoleon Hill as a person, right? You know, Andrew Carnegie told him, hey, you should go interview all these billionaires or millionaires at the time and find out their formulas of success. In essence, you are a carbon copy of the 21st century of Napoleon Hill because of your proximity and what you've been able to accomplish and what you've been able to do. But on top of that, you're gifted with the gift of action, right? So you're yeah. able to implement and take action on the opportunities uh, surrounding you. What would you say are some of the top pieces of advice that you've received from the the people that you've had proximity with that had the most influence? Yeah, I mean, if you help people, enough people get what they want, you'll get what you want. That's one thing. Uh, I mean, I, I have like this formula I live by, and this could be Napoleon Hill principles, but also just my own thing is mm. taking action is the most important thing. I mean, ideas are shit without action. It, it's great. I think of things, but I also implement towards them relationships is key who you surround yourself with who you're in business with even your significant other they will make you or they will break you mm. um the next one is adding value being a person of value and constantly thinking of ways to over deliver to your audience but also the people that give you money um investing is a big one for me investing whether you're investing in companies or investing in yourself your knowledge your wisdom your relationships again your brand video content and then the last one is i live by the never give up theme because it really is. If you have faith, persistence, and you never give up, then you're eventually you're going to achieve something. And it might not be exactly how you imagine it, but you're going to find a way. It's going to happen in the way it should. Yeah. Uh, but most people fall short. They quit. They they stop. <laughs> Fear kicks them in the face or somebody else holds them back. So that's kind of been my just rules to live by. And yeah. And one other thing I would say is uh, Jeff Hoffman. I, I've learned things from him. He created uh, Priceline, Priceline.com. He created the kiosk and airports. He was a producer and everything. And a few things I learned from him. And one thing I learned from him that actually he didn't share with me. I just learned by acknowledging what he did is storytelling. When he mm -hmm. answered questions, he answered with a story from a past experience. So literally any time you ask him something and you're like, hey, what do you think of this? He yep. will answer with a story from a past experience, and that story makes you like really understand it. And so that's one thing he did. Um, and then just the power of a team, being around the right people, executing, and and working in harmony. Yeah, a lot of what you have said today is is about proximity, and you know your your network is your net worth, and it's about who you know. You talked about a lot of collaborations you've had, and a lot of people you've you've had proximity to. 
for anybody out there who's watching this that's that's sort of struggling to level up or to sort of <clears throat> change the people that they surround themselves with, right? A lot of times our friends are are holding us back and we don't even know it. And we and and sometimes I think I was reading something by Ryan Pineda this morning. He was talking about, hey, it would be really cool if all of our friends could rise up at the same time and we all we all do this together, but it's just not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. So what are some ways that people can sort of level up, collaborate with some people who are doing things at a higher level, or just get proximity to some, some bigger people? A few things, and this is probably the hardest thing that most people don't do, is they care too much about what people think, is look around who's in your circle, and you might have to cut some of those people out. They may be limiting your success, and also where you live. Are you living in where the opportunity is? So I moved to St. Petersburg, Florida 18 months ago to be right down the street from Kevin Harrington to do more business with them. So that helped grow my business. I took a leap, but I've, I moved to Orlando, Florida years ago because the guy that taught me TV production and shows lived there. Mm -hmm. And so I've lived in Des Moines. I've lived all over the country because I always moved to where I needed to be in proximity. That's one thing. Again, the people around you, some people that got you to here may not get you to here. So maybe it doesn't make sense to be in their circle anymore. I'm not saying you don't have to be friends with them, just maybe limit your interaction. So always be looking at how can you level up? How can you continuously get the right people in your circle? Mm -hmm. I would say one of the big things I did early on is I invested in people. Even when I didn't really have the money, I did it. I invested in mentors. I paid people. Um, and I think a lot of people, their mistake is they don't get that and they don't do it. They're like, they're too good to pay for somebody pay for their coaching, pay for their mastermind, pay for their mentorship, buy their books, invest in a dinner with them. And that I found to be the biggest thing to get people's attention because when you become a person of influence and you've achieved something, everybody wants something from you. They expect it. It's like, it's just gonna, hey, I deserve this from you. That's mm. bullshit. You have to come from a place and flip the script, help them. And actually when you say you're gonna do something, do it. And that was initially how I got Kevin Harrington's, his attention is I had hired somebody that did a deal with him on Shark Tank. I paid him a bunch of money to be my mentor. I was in proximity. And eventually I hired Kevin Harrington to speak at one of my events in Iowa. So I paid his fee, brought him in. And then not only that, I didn't just stop there. I found other ways to make money together. And one of the first deals we did was a product called Peeps. And it was less than a hundred million or less than a million dollars. We were in a mastermind together. And this deal went on to do 150 million over the, le the, the next six years. Nice. And so that was one deal we did together, but then we won Emmys together. Like I kept showing up and adding value to that person, which then you get to a point where you're just friends. And so that's the biggest thing I would say, invest in the right people, find somebody that's already achieved what you wanna achieve in your own way, hire them, find a way to get into business for them, invest in them, and it'll make it easier for you and your success. And most people think too small, short term. They're like, oh, I want the result now. Like, it's like, I'm gonna invest now, and I see this being something that's gonna help me grow in five or 10 years. And I did that about 13 years ago. Yeah. And so because I did that 13 years ago, it's just kind of been compounding from there. You know, and, and the crazy thing is, is that a lot of people who are single can take on those crazy risks, but you were married mm -hmm. when you were taking on a lot of those risks too. It wasn't easy. I was single for a while and then, I, I mean, my, my uh, wife has been with me. We've been married almost, uh, this October will be 10 years or five years, but been together 10 years. Yeah. And and so she was with me when I had nothing. She was <laughs> with me when we we're doing good. And then she was with me had nothing. And then now like, it's cool to see together because we, we do business together as well. And just to see like that, like, as you think of some people, they achieve massive success and then they, they find somebody else. Well, we were together along the whole roller coaster, fucked up ride along the way. I guess, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing she's just hoping that uh, Kevin doesn't want to move anytime soon, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, no, yeah, she's well, like, now that we're in St. Petersburg, uh, you know, Kevin, stay put for a bit. I'm not against having multiple places, but yeah, it's definitely uh, – it's, it's definitely a, a thought that's been brought to my attention. <laughs> no, but that's one thing that's valuable is the reason why people say like in your 20s, you need to go at it really, really hard and like maybe hold off on getting married until like you're in your 30s or when there's a three there, or maybe, you know, it depends until you find the right person. Because if you do want to chase your dreams or go after something, your significant other matters so much because that support is, uh, like you said, it's a maker to break it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like so many different times, like a lot of different, like especially like the older like billionaires who have made it across the board. You look at their significant others across them. And it's always like, that was like their biggest support across there. What would you tell for people who are struggling with taking that leap 
if they don't have that support as of right now? They're probably not taking that leap because they care too much of what people think. Mm. It could be their significant other. It could be their mom or dad or friends or whoever else on social media. Uh, I'll tell you this. The thought for me was waking up one day, being old, and always wondering what if. Mm. And so I kind of live by that. And I never want to wake up and have regret. And so I've always lived on that. And, and so I would say somebody watching right now, what if? What if you don't do it? I mean, what if you do it and it doesn't work? That's fine. At least you say you did it. You tried. But what if you don't? And then you just you keep getting older. Time goes by. And then you're going to have regret. And that's something I never wanted to have. You know, David Goggins was actually asked in a, uh, an event a couple, I think it was a year ago. It's actually at the Tom Ferry event. They asked him, how do you handle uh, situations when you don't want to do something or it's like, it's all against you? And he just says, well, I asked myself, well, what if? What if I actually did do it? What if I actually did wake up and I push myself that. to do that? Yeah. And he'll just push through. Uh, and he was like, that's the only thing that gets it through. And that reminded me of it, right? He's, he's in my head, I swear. I listened to his stuff on, there's some motivational stuff on Spotify. And I swear that guy, like, it, it's, it pushes me because I think, what would he say? He would say, stop being a pansy, yeah. get up and do it. Yeah. And yeah. so like his, I love his stuff because he is, I mean, he's insane, man. Like he's the whole next level of fitness for himself. And I look at that in all areas of life. Yeah. It, it's, uh, I, I was listening to his book called, uh, the new one, um, on the I Audible. I have read the new one yet. It's amazing. Never finished or uh, it's something yeah. along that line. Uh, but it's an insane, it's an insanely good book uh, to listen to because they have the podcast going on in between there. And after listening to it, I was, cool. I was like, I'm going to run outside when it's 30 degrees. I'm going to push myself. I was like sick like a dog for two days later. But it was just like, it felt so good being able to finish something that difficult and painful. Um, but that's, that's like you were saying earlier, you're happy you went through those hardships. So that way you come out of the other side, a better person, wiser person, and smarter all around, right? With what actions and steps you need to take moving forward. 100%. I mean, some of the stuff I did along the way, like I look back, I'm like, maybe I wasn't proud or I was like crazy and. It was really insane, but if I wouldn't have done it, it would have never got me to where I am. So it's, uh, I wouldn't change a thing. Well, I know your time is valuable and I know that our yeah. timer is beeping on our side. Is anything that you're working on that you want to share with the audience, the people who are viewing, something that you're working on, something that they connect, can connect with you on? Yeah, I mean, I one of the things I do uh, with my wife is we have an event we put on called Rise and Record. I was actually going to ask you to, to, to close close with that, yeah. Yeah, it's all about sharing your story through video content. And and so we that all came from us getting a camera a decade ago and filming content along the journey. And then we did the TV show together and we always like shared people's stories. And once we started seeing the results just from them sharing their story, we realized, oh, wow, it's powerful to share your story, but also it's powerful to create video content. So now we have an annual event. It's in Nashville, October 17th through the 19th. Nashville, Tennessee, and then we do masterminds where we film with people around the country. And so that's something just have a, a huge passion on with my wife called Rise and Record. Um, you can go to riseandrecord.com. And yeah, that's that's one of my big things. And if anybody ever wants to learn from me, they can go to brandontadams.com. Awesome. And, and Brandon, um, you guys are recording all sorts of content, like across all different industries. Yeah, so we we work with real estate agents. We work with uh, people in finance. We work with talent coaches. You name it. I mean, I've literally we've even filmed with uh, different celebrities like Ric Flair, Carmen Electra. We filmed with you name it. We we filmed content, and so um, Rise and Record specifically is for entrepreneurs looking to grow their influence and brand. Uh, but I mean, I'm always next week. I'm filming too here, so it's uh, I never know what I'm going to get myself into. So you help people that are maybe struggling to film their own content. You help them with like ideas, you help them. I help people to give a really easy look at it is Rise Record helps people understand how to share their story and, and use video to grow their business, specifically through sharing their story on camera. And so we have the education around that. And then the mastermind, we'll film content with people. But at the highest level is the companies that I have ownership in or high level entrepreneurs that I advise. I help them grow their company exponentially through the power of video content, video marketing, but also my connections and proximity. Mm. And so that's like really the side of the business for the growth. And Rise and Record is just another way to help people uh, through video. Yeah, awesome. that's smart. Because storytelling through their journey to gain the clients and the consumer's trust through that uh, you know quality 
helps the brand. It's 100%. I mean, storytelling is the most powerful thing we have, guys. Like, if you could take anything away, if you can learn to incorporate stories in your speeches, in your podcast, in your answers, in your social media content, people buy into stories, they're more likely to retain the information, they're more likely to do something with it. So if you can communicate a story effectively, specifically through a video, people are going to be drawn to you and they're going to want to work with you. And so I've been doing that now for a while. And it's just crazy to see how much it works. And if people understood that, how much money you can make them and help them achieve their goals, they would do it. The problem is most people fear getting in front of the camera and they don't know what to do with the content. So what I do is I help them get in front of the camera, share their story, but also produce content and then how to implement and execute it in marketing campaigns. Damn, I wish we talked about that because that's extremely valuable. Yeah. <laughs> that's like the golden <laughs> nugget cliffhanger right there. Um, but you're also the second person. We just we filmed two podcasts yesterday and mm-hmm. you're the second person to put that's such an em- emphasis on. I mean, of course, we've all heard it over the years of the power of storytelling and and uh, how it can help salespeople with sales and, and just, yeah. just make an impact. But uh, it's interesting that just right off the podcast yesterday. That's, yeah. Um, I think it's meant for us to dive in and learn that part. <laughs> I'm glad somebody else is doing it because it, they they get it then. They understand it. I mean, yeah. real estate agents should do it. I mean, all people should do it. And even if you're not trying to grow your business, you could be raising money for a charity. And, and that could, I mean, my background was fun, crowdfunding, fundraising. And the videos that we created is what drew the emotion allowed to raise money for different causes. Yeah. And so it can relate to anything. In closing, uh, can you give one example of storytelling? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll say this. There's two sides of stories. And like there's so many different stories you can share. But the biggest thing I share is share who you are and what you do. So one side of it to get people to really get to like and trust you in commonality is sharing about who you are as a person, your beliefs. Maybe you have a family. Maybe you grew up in Iowa like me. Whatever it is about you. Because when you share that, people get to know you as a person. Now, mm-hmm. the other side of it is share what you do to help people. How do you help them grow? How do you make their life easier? What's your product or service? Communicate that consistently so much so it becomes annoying. Mm. And so for me, I'm I'm constantly talking about video content, growing your brand, using video. And so those two things is what come together for people to really understand your story, what you do and how you help them, which means they're going to be more likely to work with you. Yeah. So is it true to say that if you have a strong uh, skill of storytelling, you don't need to have a call to action? No. I mean, for me, I people, they're eventually going to reach out to you. Mm. I'll say, hey, share this or reach out or DM me. But if you really make an impact and memorable moment on somebody, they're going to reach out. Well, I think what's interesting about real estate agents is, I mean, a a lot of them, I mean, of course, there's a handful that struggle to film content or even get themselves Mm -hmm. on camera. But the masses really have no problem making it all about them, right? Well, it's salespeople. That's the problem. They don't want to make it salesy, but then they make it about me. <laughs> they realize hey, you're you're 100 correct. Yeah. I mean, I've worked with a lot of agents, and that's a big mistake they make. They don't. They're afraid to share more about them because they they care what people think or they get in their head. Yeah, and they're just constantly like it's just too much on the business side, which is good. But you also got to share more about yourself. I'll tell you somebody that does it really well. A uh, good friend of mine who the event you went to, Ralph Dubagnara. Yeah. Ralph is crushing it with content. I've been working with Ralph for a couple of years now. We met on a podcast show and he is like not only educating people, but he's bringing inside his obstacles and who he is as a person. I think he, he's one of the best at that, especially in the mortgage real estate space. Um, so he's somebody I'd suggest following because he, he understands how to do it. Most people don't. And if you do understand how to do it, you're going to get a lot of deal flow and deals from it. Yeah. Yes. I think the, the, the thing that realtors struggle with is, is conveying the message that they're good at what they do, they're known for what they do, without saying like, you know, I sold this home for a million dollars and it was a hundred thousand dollars over asking price and five days, and, and and they just make it very dull and and very similar to what everybody else is doing. So but also, it's not it's not niche. So like an yeah. example, I've I've done whole seminars on this. I've spoke to different real estate groups and where it's like, hey, if you want to be a person that sells lake house homes. Like all you do is talk about lake house homes and literally that's what you're known for. And yes, you're going to actually bring in other deals, but you're going to be the go-to person for lake house homes. So speaking into that niche and what will happen is that's the riches are in the niches. Mm -hmm. So make sure your messaging is consistent for me again, video uh, for that person selling the lake house home. And when you constantly speak that message, 
people are like, that's the go-to person. And so that will bring deals to you. And then eventually people will be like, oh, do you also do this? Yes, I can do that. We, we said we'd keep it short and sweet. And uh, thank you for going <laughs> a little bit over. Yeah. We know your time is valuable, man. Uh, any last takeaways for the audience you want to share? Yeah, I would just say get out your phone, start recording content, share with the world who you are, what you do, how you help people. Do it consistently. And uh, if you want to learn more about me and connect with me, DM me on Instagram at Brennan T. Adams. That was actually how we connected. We originally connected at the uh, the event in New That's Jersey. That's right. And, uh, you know, you, you made a, a message. Yeah, of course. Your message was awesome that day. We, we I remember we all got back in the car, went back to our office, and uh, you were one of the top speakers that day. So we really appreciated uh, all that you shared By with the us way, there. By the way, that day, yeah. I said 120 videos I send every year. This year I did 250. So, oh, shit. Wow. <laughs> um, personal videos that I send out every year. That's another thing for real estate agents or anybody. Literally sending personal videos that are like 15 to 30 seconds to people is the quickest way to gain the connection, top of mind. And it leads, especially for real estate agents, leads to listings and deals. So when, just to elaborate on that a little bit further, people that you met at that event, you sent a personal video to? No, I'm saying everybody. This is I mentioned that on stage about how I send out personal oh, yes. videos. Yes, I remember that. Daniel Neal is on stage yeah. with me. But I'll tell you what I do is I will send out personal videos every week. So if I somebody you want to connect with and be on top of mind or just let them know I'm, I'm thinking of them, I'll send them a personal video. But every year during Christmas – I'll send them a Christmas video that's custom to them, not one that goes to all. Literally, it's all unique to that person. So I'll shoot them all, and then I'll send them all out. It's probably one of the most smart campaigns that you can do, but also I love doing it because people smile and it makes them happy. Awesome, man. Well, thank you so much for spending some time with us thank today. You guys. We really appreciate do time, appreciate dude. it, and uh, we'll make sure that uh, you know if there's any other future collaborations, if anybody else reach out, reaches out asking for, for – um, you know, more information, we'll definitely send them over to your, to your website. Thank you, guys.